Okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you um, for the for the mentoring hour that we had. We thank you for Lord speaking to us, God. We thank you, Lord, that um, Lord, you want us to be all that you have called us to be, Father God. Yes, Lord, your calling is unique. Your gifting is amazing. And Father God, we thank you that as a Heavenly Father, Lord, you want us to grow up and mature and, and be Christ-like. And, and Father God, your will for us is good. Your desire for us is good. Yes, Lord, the very thoughts that you have for us are good thoughts, Father God, that we might, Lord, thrive and flourish in all that you've called us to be, Father God. We thank you that you always lift us up, Father God, from where we are. And you always, Lord, encourage us, Father God. You are the Lord, it, um, the source of eternal encouragement and hope, Lord. We thank you for that, God. And Master, we commit this course, Lord, uh, into your mighty hands. We pray that it will be something that edifies us, builds us up. And uh, even as we look into it, God, we pray that you will speak to us. And it will be a season of equipping, God, even as we look into this course. We thank you. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, welcome to Life Skills. Um, it's, a, it's a practical course, um, and uh, it's something that's um, uh, that's something that's that that's like a you know that's adds on to all that we are uh, we are learning to right. We are what we are uh, equipping ourselves uh, for to be ministers of God. So this is something that really um, adds to that, right? So yes, um, when we look into God's word, it talks about, let's say, if you look at Proverbs 22, um, let me just take that verse, Proverbs 22, and I think it's the last verse. Yeah, Proverbs 22. Do you see a man who excels in his work? Right? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Okay? It's talking about excellence. It's talking about doing something with great skill and ability. Okay? So he's saying, uh, you know, if you see someone like that who excels at his or her work, uh, then that person is going to serve before, you know, people of influence and and prominence, and uh, not before unknown men. Which means that. That this is something uh, that Scripture declares. That this is the this is the place of someone who uh, who brings about great skill, who brings about great ex I mean e excellence to their work, right? So this course that we are looking at, uh, which is life skills, it actually talks about certain basic skills that we can develop in, uh, uh, which we need to develop in. Right. Um, if you, if, if you, look, you know, in the words of the apostle Paul, he says that you know we present, we 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 present every man mature in Christ. Of course, it's talking about Christ likeness. We do everything to present one a, a person mature in Christ, that they may develop in all things. Right. So when we look at uh, you know our spiritual development, okay. We, we are developing as a person. We're developing ourselves as a minister of God. Now, our focus is primarily on spiritual matters of you know, spiritual strength and uh, spiritual input, spiritual um, skills, uh, gifting, and all that. And yes, that is very, very valid. That's a very important part. That's the fundamental part of it, right? But we also see that when it comes to ministry, there are other things that that make us, you know, and what we can call as certain other skills that add on that help us. You know. And these may not be termed as quote unquote spiritual, or in our minds, you know, we kind of put them as non-spiritual. You know, it's it's easy to put them as non-spiritual, right? But uh, but we see that these are important. Right. In fact, that secular and sacred things, you know, I don't think there is a line because God's God has created a spirit, soul, and body, and we are a you know, and He addresses us as spirit, soul, and body. So you know, He addresses us as the whole person. 
and there is really you know nothing that is that we can call as okay that is secular this is sacred and so on right he it is a wholesome thing right and uh, and so the things that we are going to look at spe specifically life skills like if you look at the term itself right what is it these are skills that that help us to make the most out of life or the, these are skills abilities what is a skill skill is an ability you know something that is useful um you know driving that's a skill right uh, cooking that's a skill and maybe communicating well that's a skill right all these are skills so we're going to look at some basic skills um that we can develop in we might take it for granted we or we might not even would have been exposed to those things and saying you know i need to develop in this area we may not even have thought of it right uh, but uh, this course will help us to probably expose ourselves right? uh, probably highlight certain things saying okay this is a skill that we need to grow in right maybe it is there at a basic level or maybe it is you know in our under own understanding and experience it is absent right so this will help us not only to recognize okay there is a need for such a skill but also to help us develop in it right and and this is a basic level of development that we are talking about this is not very in depth uh, of each of these skills so if we want to go we can actually progress on to look at more in depth skills uh, you know if you if you're personally interested you can you can pursue that right so so uh, skills when we look at life skills when we look at skills itself right we we see that okay these are things that really help us help us face challenges help us live our life effectively help us to do things effectively okay so for example um, you know certain skills may not be priority for us right like uh, certain we might we might think okay you know driving why should i you know why should i why should that be a priority okay uh, but then for certain others we know that okay that is a priority that is something that they need because that is how they can go from point a to point b and there is no other mode right? so it's a very very important uh, skill right um similarly you know like maybe tech tech skills like it or working on an excel sheet we may think that okay i you know that's that, that that is not required for me you know i do a lot of physical work maybe repair and that kind of thing so for us in our priority of skills that may not be the top right but for a person who is analyzing a lot of things who is presenting things who is um, you know working with a lot of data and information for that person it seems it is a high priority i need to use how uh, i need to know how to use an excel sheet so so that's that's always there okay so when you look at these skills some of these skills you know you might feel that okay this is this is not so much of priority but then we have put together some of these skills which are basic and general which would in any life situation in any season of life this would actually come in handy right this would be useful okay so we're looking at you know personal development communication management of time management of money um, even though we looked at finances uh, personal finances and you know um, uh, at a, in an earlier course uh, planning and goal setting and again we looked at that in our leadership so we're going to kind of review that conflict resolution very important continuous learning and so on okay so so in other words we are saying that we are actually developing ourselves as a person right as a whole person there is a develop so what does it mean to develop which means to increase right in skill ability your uh, when we growing right all these things are there now sometimes when you look at biological growth it happens automatically right so uh, as you as we grow as we age there is biological growth right from if you look at an infant to a toddler to a teenager to a young adult to you know so we see that there is biological growth growth that happens naturally but when it comes to uh, you know spiritual growth well you can be a believer for x number of years but that does not guarantee that the person is growing spiritually yes or no yeah so like 
in our Corinthian, uh, Corinthians class, we, we, we saw that uh, these were believers for one and a half years or probably more, but then they had not grown. Paul still addressed them, hey, you, you guys are very gifted, moving in the gifts, but then you are still spiritual babes. So which means that you know, just the passage of time does not guarantee spiritual growth. Right? Spiritual growth is intentional. When we seek God, when we go after, when we receive His Word, and when we do something with His Word, like when we believe and we receive it, um, that builds us up. You know, that produces faith in us when we actively seek God and you know, praying in tongues that uh, you know, the Word of God says, 1 Corinthians 14, that that brings about edification. You know, and, and when we say, when we, when we have a lifestyle of consecration, when we say no to certain things, when we put to death certain things, that brings about, again, edification, right? So, so these are things, oh, uh, maturity, Christ-likeness. So it is intentional. Similarly, when we look at developing ourselves as a person, you know, when we look at certain abilities, yes, we are born with certain abilities. We are born with certain natural temperaments in the sense some people are very organized, very disciplined, right? So some of us can always find our things, right? How many of us are like that? You know, you you have no problem. You know, keys, you can always find it. That particular, you know, the shirt that I want to wear, that particular dress, you always find it, right? Anyone like that? Right, okay. But then there are some people who cannot find anything. Right, in the sense, it takes them an additional effort to find because things are not put in the exact place. You know, if there is a place for the key, it is not there. So every time they leave the house, there is a frantic ten-minute search. Where did I keep it? Did I keep it near the kitchen? Did I keep it in the fridge? Put it inside the fridge, or did I keep it in the? You know, so there is a frantic search. So some of us are temperamentally, of course, this is an exaggerated example, but some of us are temperamentally. You know, uh, we have those natural traits. We are disciplined. We wake up at a certain time, sleep at a certain time, and we are disciplined, right? But some of us are not. So when we need to develop ourselves personally, that also has to be intentional. Some of these things come to us naturally, but we need to uh, develop ourselves um, personally, right? Uh, intentionally. Okay. So, um, you know, there's this person by name Abraham Maslow. And uh, he talked about, uh, you know, uh, I'm just presenting that uh, for the online students. He talked about, uh, it, it's there in the notes as well. He talked about, his, uh, he presented a theory uh, to the world about um, a hierarchy of needs, right? Saying that, okay, there is this whole hierarchy, there is this path and uh, pathway of needs. And what, when each of these needs are, met, then the person actually goes on to the next level of pursuing those needs. Okay, So if you look at that pyramid, it talks about physiological needs, you know, the basic need of food, water, uh, oxygen, uh, you know, feeling, um, being comfortable, uh, sleep, relaxation, and all these things, these are physiological needs. When you say physiological needs, these are needs of the body. Okay, So this is a basic need which a person actually you know, gravitates towards, or if these are not met, then, you know, uh, these are the, the, the things that the person pursues, okay? You feel hungry, you know, you, you want to sleep, you want to rest, there's a need for activity and so on, right? Then the next level of need uh, that he, that he um, you know, suggested was the need to be safe, need to be protected, shelter, right? Uh, a home, a place where you can stay, uh, help, um, you know, and um, uh, familiarity, routine, and all that. So safety needs. The next level is, you know, when these needs are met, the next level is like, okay, I, I want to be part of a, a community, right? Family, um, yeah, friendship, and being able to trust, being able to receive trust, affection, love, etc. Then a, a need like esteem you know we want significance or there's a need for uh, achieving something there's a need for self respect and respect from others um, and also skill and all that be, uh, to be acknowledged right Up, acknowledged and approved over that and then also you know above that is a need for 
knowledge, understanding, uh, meaning, right? So this is there. Then over and above that, an aesthetic need, meaning creativity, right? You want things to be not just functional, but aesthetic as well, right? Um, and I, I remember, you know, as bachelors when we were living, it was a very functional place, right? Just very basic, one mat you know, on the floor, one mattress, and that's it. And, and, and people used to wonder, how, how do these guys live? You know, there are three of us, the four of us living in that house, and that's it. You know, just very functional. Didn't even think of other things, you know, because that is, that is something that our needs were in that level. We had not actually gone beyond that. But then aesthetic needs, like maybe, uh, you know, maybe we want uh, you know, some uh, good furniture or you want some, put some plants there, you know, put some pl flowers there and, uh, and good looking curtains there or whatever, you know, some, something decorative, something that where you're able to express yourself creatively even. So that's an aesthetic need. Okay, then the whole thing of self-actualization, you know, reaching the full potential that you are able, that you are capable of, and so on. So, so Maslow actually, you know, gave this theory to the world. And well, yes, to a to a certain extent, yes, you know, we we can kind of identify with it. There are these needs which are any human, you know, just just to just to actually identify that these are certain needs that a human being has, right? Um, well, some people may not agree. Okay, it's, it goes in this fashion. You know, the needs uh, go up in this fashion. But if you actually look at it, well, it kind of reflects, right, the kind of needs that uh, people have. Okay, and and he goes on to say that the self actualization of reaching the potential, um, you know, is is also one very felt need. Okay? So when we look at personal development, right, developing ourselves personally. We can also say that, yes, there is a need, a felt need in every human being to develop, to become all that I want to be. You know, I have this potential and I feel I have this potential and I want to, you know, develop that potential. There is a, you know, deep-seated need, deep-seated desire, you know, and it need not be the same as the other person, right? Your need for personal development in certain areas need not be the same as, you know, your, the other person. It can be very, very uh, different, uh, completely different, in fact. So, so that's that's fine. That's not a problem at all. So, uh, but there is just for us to know that yes, there is a need for developing ourselves personally. Okay, some basic things that that can help us, you know, to kickstart that, you know, to start off on that. Okay. First thing is. When we organize our time, okay. So, when we look at resources, okay, what is a resource? Something that is value, something that of value, something that is useful. That's a resource, right? That is why we use the word, you know, natural resources. And he said, what are natural resources? Some natural resources that you can think of. Sorry, yeah, natural resources. Yeah, fuel. Okay, uh, and then water is a resource. Yeah, uh, of course, very necessary. Um, you know, if you look at fuel, it can be various kinds of fuel, fossil fuel. Now, development of you know other resources, and um, you know where uh, resource like electricity and so on. Right. So these are these are resources. So when we look at resources, we we look at wealth as a resource, like money. Right. We look at uh, even abilities as a resource. And time is also a very important resource, right? Because time is something that's a, that's a resource that's that's always, you know, getting depleted, right? With every second we live out our life. And time, uh, our life as in our earthly life, right? We know that we are eternal beings. And then, oops, and there is a hereafter and so on. So, um, so we know that uh, that is the... Uh, that is definitely there, but then you know our earthly time. We know it's you know, there is a there is a cap on it, right? There is a limit to that. So with knowing that this is a resource and knowing that okay, there are certain things that you want to do, there are certain things that you want to accomplish. Uh, when we organize ourselves or organize that this particular resource, what does it mean to organize, to arrange, to plan? 
right? Uh, how am how am I going to spend it? How am I going to because it's it's not going to come back, we know for sure, but we can actually spend it well, right? Uh, spend it usefully, right? So in our 24 hours, there are certain things that yeah we need to have mandatory. We need time for refueling, recharging, you know, which means eating. We need time for rest, right? We need to sleep, and we can't function without it, right? And when we have limited sleep, it affects us, right? affects our behavior, affects our mood, right? And there is time for work and study and so on. So, and, and other things like social activities and entertainment and all that. So we need to organize this so that it is effective in our lives. You know, this is a basic thing. Right, very basic thing, and and we know that this organizing of time uh, for all the other things, activities, and things that changes with our season, that changes with our roles and responsibilities. You know, as a single person, as a student, it's different because the activities are different, the priorities are different. You know, as a married person, again, it changes, and as a parent, it changes. So we see that with every season, this changes, and so it it requires looking into. Right? It requires looking into because it is changing with every season. Your priorities are changing with every season. And given the fact that time is a resource, one needs to organize. One needs to, the importance of organizing uh, time in our lives. And especially when we connect that with personal development, how we are going to develop ourselves, which is a need there. Right, uh, And uh, uh, we need to look at time. Right. Um, making sure that we have time for all the things that we need to do, rest, work, education, family, and all that, and maybe hobbies, the things that you want to do, right? So some things that we are going to look at, you know, these are things that maybe you, you know already. Okay? One of the most important things when it comes to time, organizing time, you know, uh, you know, as a person in ministry, as a person in you know, wherever, whichever environment you are in, is to s learning to say no. Okay, because when we, uh, we we when we want to say yes to all activities, we are actually saying no to a whole lot of things. You know, when we say yes, right? um, which means that since it is it is only twenty four hours that we have, we need to. No, we need to we need to know that there are certain things that we can there are there are things that we cannot do in those twenty four hours. Only there are only certain things that we can do effectively, um, so that it is useful, so that we it is you know the output is good. There are only certain things, and it differs from person to person, right? There are people who are highly skilled who can do a lot in a very short time. Right? And you know that okay, you need to prepare for a presentation, right? You know how man, how like. Whatever time it takes, it might take you an hour. It might take you two hours, maybe maybe three hours. Right, Pre prepare for it. So you know, which means that if it's going to take you that many hours to prepare, you you have to learn to say no to certain other commitments or other things, right? other invitations maybe or other activities maybe. We need to learn to say no, right. Um, Maybe even you know social uh, activities, right? Invitations to visit and and spend time and all that. We need to you know able to we need to be able to say no. We need to be able to prioritize. Okay, uh, if we are working, right? If we are working, if we are even you know in ministry and serving in other areas, we need to also learn to delegate. What does it mean to delegate? Sorry. Yeah, right, right. So there are certain things that you do, which only you can do, and which are, which you are skilled to do, and it is your responsibility to do it. Right? You are answerable. You are accountable. There's no one else can do it. Right? Maybe you're in a team. Maybe you're leading a team, and there are certain things that, like, is you are, you are supposed to be doing it. Right? So those things that you do, and maybe there are other things which are less critical, or other things which. Which we can delegate or hand over, and uh, give it to uh, maybe a team member or give it to another person to do it. 
right so that your uh, so that you know our weight or our load our burden is lessened right? and especially when we are working with a team there is a sharing of burden right there is sharing of the load or the responsibility that that needs to be fulfilled so so delegation okay, that's a very important thing so we are going to look at it in detail you know how can i delegate and after you know delegation is is not just unloading right we understand that delegation is not just you know this you do whatever you want with it i don't care you know it's not that right because ultimately it will come back to you right so uh, we're going to look at what delegation is in detail but then you know delegation is something that we can do if you're thinking of time if you're thinking of making best use of our time okay then the third thing is uh, uh, this is not an order of importance or anything this is just in a random order okay to have a to-do list a list of things to do a daily to-do list or a weekly to-do list and uh, there are several things you know when we look at goal setting and planning we can actually look at that there are several uh, instruments that help us there are several tools that help us okay so so how many of you have a to-do list you know I have a habit yeah you have one in your mind wow <laughs> okay uh, okay online folks do you have a to-do list do you make a to-do list when do you make it so, Sri Radha, when do you make your list when do you write down your list is it once a month. Oh, it's a monthly list. Okay, okay. Shira, what about you? No list. Okay, okay. Fine. So Chaya also says, yes, there's a to-do list. Now, to-do list is helpful uh, because uh, one is uh, we don't miss out on things that we, important things that we need to do, right? Uh, maybe meeting people, appointments, um, and the more complex your tasks become, the more crowded or you know, the more, the greater your responsibility and uh, maybe you're looking at two, three, you know, multiple areas of responsibilities, right? Uh, a to-do list always helps, you know, like for, you know, you, you go shopping, you make a list, right? You make a list. Why do you make a list? So that you don't miss out on anything. You come back home and you said, you know, I, I forgot this. Now, thank God for Blinkit and, uh, you know, Instamart you know? <laughs> and yeah, Swiggy Instamart, you, you get it. But, you know, uh, but it's always a good thing. Even there, you know, sometimes we order and then we realize, oh, he just came and then I, I missed out. I missed out on, you know, adding eggs to it or things like that, right? So a list helps. List helps in remembering the task. The list also helps in prioritizing the tasks. Like, okay, which one goes first? Okay, And a lot of tools are there. And, uh, you know, multiple to-do lists. Like, um, I don't know if we looked at um, Bregman. The to-do list that he has in, in our Christian leadership class, um, yeah, I think it was last semester or semester before that. You know, like uh, he he talks about you know, what are those main areas. You know, like maybe work, work in in work, you might have some tasks, four or five ta five areas that you're responsible for, or maybe it is like work, personal life, ministry. You know, so maybe some three big areas that you can look at. And there's a to-do list for each of those areas on a daily basis that will help you cover things so that you don't miss out on anything. Okay. Now, um, okay, Google has a, has a, as an app, as you can free thing that you can download. It's called Google Tasks. Okay, so so you can. Uh, that's a very useful thing. Like for example, I I use that. So you can have multiple to-do lists, right? And as soon as you finish it, you can just take it off, take it off the list, right? So um, I don't know if we can. Okay, I don't have screenshots of that, but then you can check it out. Okay, it's called Google Tasks, Play Store, or uh, I'm sure the App Store also has. Um, so you can have multiple lists. Like for example, my to-do list looked like this. You know, things to do today. That is one. Then BC, I put on Bible College. Uh, to-do list, then there's one member care to-do list, then there's one chrysalis counseling to-do list, then there's APC South to-do list, <laughs> okay, then there is one worship team to-do list, then there's a life coaching to-do list, then there's a marriage and family conference, then there's a message preparation, then there is, you know, other personal uh, to-do lists, and uh, and so on. So you can add to these lists. Um, yeah, sometimes it can seem very overwhelming, but um, but it's 
it's good at least i have this so that uh, when you're looking at multiple areas you know it helps to keep track it helps to prioritize as well okay i need to do this today right uh, i need it needs to get done today so you put that in the list so what are we doing we are making use of our time right um that we might say okay i don't have many things to do but it's a good exercise to help us make the best use of our time even if it's two things that you want to do you know it it helps right um okay also in a, in in line with saying no we need to give up things that you really don't want to or don't need to do okay uh, another thing that helps us in our management of time is to know yourself to be self aware okay at what time of the day are you very active which is your most productive times of in a day right so what do you think have you thought of that when are you most productive when are you like most um you know uh, able to do a lot of things you're you're sharp you're able to focus like is it like 5 am 6 am or is it like definitely not post lunch post lunch is you know it's really a difficult time for most people um yeah so so the, some people are you know like early risers they are fresh in the morning right but some people they come alive only when after the sun goes down <laughs> till then they are doing this and that but then after the sun goes down is when they are you know late night is when they function well right so whatever it is so you need to know when are you most productive okay, that will help us how so you can actually um we can actually do the thing the important things the things that require our best of full focus and attention right our important decisions need to be made and all those things yes we sometimes we don't have the luxury of waiting till then right but when you know when you are aware you can avoid okay i need to avoid these moments when i'm actually drowsy when i'm you know and i can't function fully um, and i need to avoid those times for the important tasks i need to avoid those times for the important decisions right maybe yeah so that will also help us right okay um so these are some things for us um overall to help us with our time right okay uh, and we are what are we looking at we're looking at personal development right second thing is to um, to also you know to put together our resume or what we call as curriculum vitae right to put together a resume right when was the last time you updated your resume right it will help us to to highlight okay this is my uh, can can someone say what are the components or elements what are the things that you put in a resume what are some things that you put there qualification so uh, so meaning what what you have studied yeah educational qualification then experience regarding work experience um, regarding maybe uh, in things that you attended like maybe workshops that you attended uh, those kind of experiences what else goes there what is our what are areas of interest yeah yes it's languages that you know so th those are some additional skills like lang skill uh, you know language i can read write i can speak right those are some things then you put some personal information also about your name your age and etc right uh, contact information this is how you can get in touch with etc so um yeah so all this goes into your resume okay so how many of us have a resume you have old one okay but it's good to update it it's good to update it and uh, you know uh, so you never know you know you might be in different seasons of life but then you know you can always you know maybe it's a work maybe it's a ministry maybe it's a whatever you know the first thing they ask is a resume right um, and say okay we want to go through that so yeah so it's good to put together okay let me just um, okay maybe for uh, online students it will be uh, visible um let me just share that uh, screen 
okay um just one second um okay this so uh, yeah so there are uh, just wanted to say that there are different tools for even putting together uh, a resume right there are templates that help us and there are also uh, different tools that help us um, and different formats uh, in which you can you know put together a resume so it uh, earlier you know uh, i remember it was very linear you know it was just text um, nothing no graphics etc but then uh, the more we look at some of these uh, resumes you see that there's a lot of um, you know there's a text but there's also you know graphics and all that so it uh, it looks interesting looks appealing and also people don't have much time right when they actually go through resumes um, they need to they need to make a decision quickly whether should we call this person or is it does the resume so which means it just directly relates to is the resume interesting right so when you are able to get that interest when you are able to gra grasp that interest then you know it it moves on to the next stage right so okay let's say okay i'm just putting together okay uh, let me just share the screen okay um Okay, um, are you able to sh look at this, All right? Okay, so this is uh, just one one of the many uh, websites which offer, you know, uh, so it's something called Live Career, Career, and there's a resume builder that it has. Um, just a minute, let me do that. Okay, so it's um, it has a resume builder, so you can actually go there, create a CV. Okay, um, so I click that. And then it helps you create a CV. So it's loading so many CV designs, pre-written phrases, job titles, etc. So it uh, you know it's it's a very simple thing. You just add it, you click on it, and then it helps you. Right? Um, okay, it's taking a time loading. Okay, so. So you can choose the template. There's some things, examples you can, and then you can download, start applying, etc. As simple as that, right? So you can mention, okay, am I a student? Am I a fresher? Am I an experienced person? So for each of these categories, it has, you know, different templates. So let's say you put yourself as a fresher, and you say this thing, okay, what is it that you are looking for? Okay, uh, companies, kind of companies. Let's just choose one, right? Okay, let's say local, continue. Uh, it says technology, education. Okay, let's say education is close to ministry, right? So, okay. So it has all these templates that you see, right? All these designs. So, okay, let, I just pick one and uh, I'll choose this. So, it, 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 you know, it gives you an option. It has more than these five also. So, okay. So I can say, okay, create a CV. And uh, you know I can just write my name, upload the photo, address, everything, and you know, keeps going. Right? I can keep adding this. So, so we have these tools, and that can help us. We don't have to be stuck to um, you know uh, our old way of presenting things. We can always find out online and use our uh, uh, resumes and. And why are we looking into all this? You know, it's about personal development, right? So we are, uh, and when we increase in our skills and abilities, we're saying, okay, the we are actually increasing in our uh, opportunities. We are actually presenting ourselves more for ministry opportunities or you know work opportunities or whatever you know uh, skill-wise, etc. We are make, we are actually um, you know presenting who we are in a better way in a good way so that you can go on to the next level of uh, of recruitment okay the third one is 
you know, is this mindset. Okay. When it comes to personal development, what actually hinders is, is uh, when we have a barrier to learn something new. Okay. See, all of us have some kind of a threshold for change, right? Or some kind of an inertia for change. When I say inertia, or this thing, we're saying that I can only take so much change, right? Or some of us, we cannot teach, take change at all, right? Um, we move into a new environment. We want to do things differently. I don't want to do it. Like, how many of you want would would be comfortable choosing something new from the menu? Like you go to a restaurant, you are choosing new things. What about you, say, rather? You go to a hotel, you're ordering lunch. Would you like to try something new or what is tested? Time and tested. I don't want to waste money. Right? Um, Hilsa fish, Hilsa fish. <laughs> That's my thing. So let me have that. Okay, so see, it's just, there's no nothing right or wrong. But this is the thing. You know, we have temperamentally, we are open to change, we are close to change. And it's based on our experience, whatever, right? So, so some of sometimes what happens is we could have a barrier for learning something new. Like I'll tell you my own, you know, I, I, I don't know, maybe I've shared it. Like for me to start using email was a big thing. Now you might think, okay. What is he saying? You know, email is something that you are, you know, that's it. You 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 you're born and then you create an email ID. You know, that's how it is, right? But those days when the email was something new and it was all in the cyber cafes, that place looked very strange and very, you know. Um, so I we never went there. We, we, I would go by, you know, my wife and I would go by. We say, should we go and try? You know, so, so we go some other time. So to create an email ID, can you imagine, right? So it took us a long time to... So, so what was it? This hesitation was actually a barrier to help us learn new things, right? So some, some of us are very, very... You know, if, if there's a new thing that you want to try, you want to learn it. Okay? But, you know, there could be a barrier. And the barrier could be for various, you know, there could be many reasons, right, that prevent us from learning something new, okay, uh, because we are we want to do it the old way, right? We want we don't want to improve on things, uh, we don't want to try anything new for fear, whatever. So one of the reasons could be um, lack of confidence, right? We uh, meaning okay, I don't have confidence to learn a new skill, confidence in our ability to learn. Right, so we're saying, okay, I don't, I don't have this confidence. I don't, I don't know if I'm able to. I, if I'll understand it, if I read something, I don't know if I'll understand it. If I, if they tell me something, okay, you do step one, step two, step three, step four, and lastly step five. I don't know if I'll be actually able to understand it and do that. Right, so there is a lack of confidence in ourselves because of past experience. Like the thing is, the antidote to that or the you know, the the way to solve it is to just jump in and do it. Right? Just do it. It doesn't matter. You know, forget the consequence. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna do that. It doesn't matter. Right? So it doesn't matter. And you give yourself permission. Permission for what? Permission to fail. Right? Give yourself. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be coming out tops all the time. Give yourself permission, saying, "Okay, I'm I'm trying it out. Yes, it is it is possible that I'll fail. It is possible that I may not understand, but I'm just going to do it anyway." Right. So what happens is when we have that mindset, this attitude, slowly, with every um, every victory or with every win that we get, our confidence is more. Right. It could be a, just a ten percent increase, but it's still an increase. Right? It's like how we increase in strength when we do certain things, you know, whether whether it's an increase in skill when we learn certain things, when we apply our mind, when we when we go for it, there will be an increase, right? So, um, so we need to deal with certain things like lack of self confidence, or, or maybe you know people have discouraged, people have said, people, you know, people have said, okay, this is not your thing, and and things like that. So, to develop new skills, you know, we may not be 
as that professional, you know, whatever, you know, that professional tennis player or, you know, we may not be there. It's fine. But it's a skill that you're learning, right? Your level of proficiency might vary, right? And it's fine if you have that kind of a target and if your natural ability is to reach there and you have that natural ability, it's fine. But you can learn something. You can learn a new skill, right? So lack of confidence is an obstacle. The second thing could be a economic situation. You know, when you look at, okay, if you need to, let's say you want to get trained in something, there is, apart from time, there is also some amount of money that is required, right? If you want to learn a particular craft, learn a particular, maybe some language or course. But thank God, we have a lot of free resources that are available online, right? You know that uh, there are there's Udemy, there's Coursera, and uh, you know a lot of videos that are available online where you can actually learn. You can actually learn courses. It's the the internet is actually a very rich resource for learning. Right? Everything is there, right? and it doesn't cost you. Or the only cost is maybe to you know to access the internet. Right, through your phone or through your laptop. The only cost is that. Where everything is there and we just need to discipline ourselves to spend some time to learn things. Whether it's a language, whether it's a new skill, whether it's even you know cooking and everything, or whether it's anything else, you know, the you name it, you want to learn, it is it is available. It's come to such a you know such a state, right? The world. So Economic situation also, you know, yes, there are certain things where money is required, but for the most part, we know that that is not, that need not be a barrier. The third thing that we can possibly look at is, you know, your commitment, your season of life, and therefore your commitment, your role in your family, um, that can be a barrier, right? So it may be, you know, certain, what you used to do, or the kind of time that you had in your previous season may not be there now. So there needs to be a certain adjustment or there needs to be some kind of you know very diligent planning. Like I remember there's this friend who whom we know from our native place. Now she um she was she was married, had yeah, had a child, daughter. But suddenly, she got very, very interested in learning Japanese. And this course was taught only in nearby town. She had to take a train, travel for about eight, eight to ten hours, and learn overnight thing. Right? But she planned it in such a way. She, you know, she planned it. She discussed with her husband, and you know, and made sure that the child is taken care of. She, and this was an ongoing thing. You know, it had, it had to be done for about a few months, and. She did that every weekend. She would travel Friday night, come back Monday morning, something like that, uh, or Saturday night. I forget. But she learned Japanese, and now, you know, her knowledge of Japanese and understanding of Japanese is is something which is a stream of avenue. I mean, no, sorry, avenue of finances, right? because it's a Japanese translation is a big thing. The companies want it. And uh, you know you need you tra translate the text and everything. It's a so she's also you know kind of fulfilled in her in her job. And and we came to know that her daughter is now going to Japan to learn in some you know uh, in university. So kind of rubbed off on her daughter as well. So so things like that, right? So uh, when it comes to family commitment, yes, it is there role and responsibility. But that also you know uh, can be planned and can be. Um, adjusted right and with the grace of god with the favor of god okay so we'll stop here and the next class we'll move on to um you know, how we can personally plan things uh, we'll look at that right okay so thank you god bless see you next class